One of the privileges I've enjoyed over the past few years is going into a local primary school and working with years three and four in their Easter week. We might not be able to make chocolate eggs this morning or indeed test the crushing resistance of eggshells, but we can tell the Easter story as we discover it. You'll hear some sentences read out that tell the Easter story from the beginning of the Bible to the end, but each sentence has a word missing. Clues will appear on the screen and all you have to do is fill in the missing word from the clues you see. They're really bad plays on the word egg or eggs. Let's see how many you can get. Um, thank you to the young people and one or two not so young for sending in these voice recordings. This Easter egg story seeks to what Christians believe about Easter. Christians believe that God is very about the world he made. God is very disappointed that we come up with every not to love him or love other people. A holy God could not live forever with people who do wrong. God, every other way to persuade people to change. It was time for God's foolproof rescue plan. Jesus, heaven to come to earth. Jesus did not come as a, but a little baby to, to humble parents. He lived as a perfect to all. He taught people about God's requirements. He taught Jesus showed how the religion of the day did not please God. The religious leaders were angry and wanted him dead. Even though they could not get their evidence to agree, they, the Romans, to crucify Jesus. Despite his innocence, he was declared guilty. Jesus was condemned to be on a cross. They him to a wooden cross with nails. As he was dying, they offered him to drink. Jesus his last breath and was put in a buried tomb. There was no it. Jesus was dead. The tomb was sealed and guarded. It appeared to be over.
On the Sunday, women came to the tomb with ointment to prepare the body for a proper burial. No one. What happened next? They found the tomb empty. Christians believe a great can now take place. Jesus to people the gift of his perfect life for their less than perfect life. Christians believe that God loves the whole world and does not anyone. Christians, what Easter means to them every time they celebrate Holy Communion. This Easter egg story seeks to explain, explain what Christians believe about Easter. Christians believe that God is very, very excited about the world he made. God is very disappointed that we come up with every excuse not to love him or love other people. A holy God could not live forever with people who do wrong. God exhausted every other way to persuade people to change. It was time for God's foolproof rescue plan. Jesus exits heaven to come to earth. Jesus did not come as a mm, egg star, but a little baby to humble parents. He lived as a perfect egg sample to all. All people were about God's eggs requirements. Jesus showed how the regular religion of the day did not please God. The religious leaders were angry and wanted him dead. Even though they could not get the evidence to agree, they but egged the Romans to crucify Jesus. Despite his innocence, he was declared guilty. Jesus was condemned to be egg sec Cuted on a cross. They per egged him to a wooden cross with nails. As he was dying, they offered him then egg to drink. Jesus exhaled his last breath and was put in a burrow tomb. There was no eggs keeping it. Jesus was dead. The tomb was sealed and guarded. It appeared to be over. On the Sunday, women came to the tomb with eggs, pen, sieve, ointments to prepare the body for a proper burial. No one expected what happened next. They found the tomb empty. Christians believe a great exchange can now take place. Jesus extends to people the gift of his perfect life for their less than perfect life. Christians believe that God loves the whole world and does not exclude anyone. Christians exclaim what Easter means to them every time they celebrate Holy Communion. Good morning. Our reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 15, the resurrection. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary 
went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I've told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Thanks be to God. In 1959, the Ford Motor Company admitted they'd made a big mistake in ma making the Ford Edsel. It cost 250 million to bring to market. They lost 200 million during the first two and a half years it was produced. It was the number one lemon in the history of the American motor industry. But smart owners turned their lemons into lemonade. They formed an Edsel Owners Club. They published a quality magazine and had annual conventions and they made their Edsels collector's cars worth much more than when they bought them new. Good Friday looks a real disaster. Everything appears to have gone horribly wrong. Easter Sunday, however, everything changes. It's a glorious triumph. And Easter Sunday dares us to put our trust in Jesus. Three things I want to look at this morning. Daring to look, daring to think, and daring to believe. Frank Morrison was a lawyer by profession and he set out to write a book that logically disproved and once and for all settled the question that many people have. Could the resurrection have actually happened? After much research and diligent discovery of the facts, to use a technical term, Morrison ended up writing a book, Who Moved the Stone?, that was completely the opposite to what he'd originally intended. Morrison writes that having seen all the facts, one is left with only one conclusion. It happened. As strange an idea as it may be, just like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes, Morrison showed logically and diligently that after all the facts have been weighed, the solution that is supported by those facts, however unlikely it may sound or look, would have to be the truth. Lee Strobel was a journalist from the Chicago Tribune. Using his journalist skills, he decided to investigate the Jesus story. He interviewed experts about the evidence of Christ from the fields of science, philosophy and history. When he gathered all the evidence, he wrote a book, The Case for Christ. It was not the book he'd hoped to write. He was an atheist. But it was the book he wrote because, based on the evidence, it demanded a response. 
Josh McDowell intended to pursue legal studies culminating in a political career. During his second year of studies, he decided to prepare a paper that would examine the historical evidence of the Christian faith in order to disprove it. He would have described himself as an agnostic despite the abuse and difficult childhood he had. Yet what he found was evidence for it. And his book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, has been one of the most influential ever written. Three people who dared to take a look at the Easter story. We read in the Easter story that the two Marys decided to take a look inside the tomb. I wonder if you'd been there, would you have gone to the tomb to take a look? After the brutality of Good Friday, the disciples were discouraged. With the stone in front of the tomb, an armed guard outside, they were put off from going and taking a look. Is anything putting you off taking a really good look at what happened that first Easter? No amount of intimidation or disappointment was going to put these two Marys off from having a look. They dared to take a look. Sometimes we don't want to take a look at things. We've decided what we want to believe and we're afraid if we take a look, we might be confronted with an inconvenient truth. Many of us will scratch our heads when people deny the Holocaust ever took place. The evidence is all there. It demands a response. But for, for some, the truth is inconvenient. So don't take a look. Sometimes life is so good we don't want to do anything to rock the boat, so we'd prefer to behave like ostriches, stick our heads in the sand and hopefully it will all go away and I can continue as normal. We've seen in the news the number of people that want to ignore the reality of what is happening with this present virus. And happy to flood into the parks and down to the beaches and places of outstanding natural beauty. Just ignore what's happening and pretend it's all right. The two Marys did something different. They dared to take a look. They rose to the challenge to look inside the empty tomb. And their actions challenge us to take a look at the Easter story. We're going to sing a song now that reminds us that Jesus came all for love. <laughs> 